This is lesson 6 of a series of videos on how to connect to a MySQL database using PDO and work with the database records. One of the most important features of PDO is that like MySQL I, it supports prepared statements when we're using SQL queries. Prepared statements remove the risk of SQL injection because they don't involve inserting strings as text straight into our SQL queries. And we no longer need to sanitize data manually before entering it into the database. All that's done for us. Copy fetch.php and rename the copy prepared statement.php. The query method that we used before just supports a raw SQL query. To use a prepared statement, we change this to prepare. And in the parentheses for prepare, we use our placeholder question mark, where first name equals, and then instead of the actual string to search for, question mark. Not in quotes, mustn't be in quotes, just a question mark. That's our placeholder. Now we use bind value to bind our search string to the placeholder question mark by referring to its position in the SQL query. We've only got one, so in this case its position is number one. And then in quotes, our search string, Andy. And then we execute the statement. Refresh, and we should get just the one matching record. If we want to search using wildcards, which in MySQL are percentage marks, then in the SQL we change equals to like, and we put the wildcards in bind value, not in the SQL query. And that'll match all first names with the letter E anywhere in them. Let's actually get rid of this var dump and um, copy the better echo line that we had before we echoed out the variables properly. And there we are, that returns all the results with an E anywhere in the first name. We can have more than one placeholder question mark, specifying that more than one field name is being searched for. So put in where ID equals question mark and first name equals question mark. In that case, we need two bind value lines. So that's looking for an ID, that's the first question mark, with the value of 3. And the question mark in position 2 is now the first name. Refresh and we should get just the one matching record displayed. Instead of searching directly for values, which is limited in what we can do with it, we can search for variables instead. First we'll set a variable name to match what we want to search for. So let's search for people called Brian, we'll make a new variable dollop name equals Brian. We change the SQL query back to what it was. For this we don't use, we can't use bind value. We have to use bind param. It's the same except we put the variable name in place of the value. There's only one question mark now, so it's position one. Refresh, and again we should get just the one matching record, Brian. If we want to match two or more fields, the procedure is exactly the same as before. We need two bind param lines, and we need to change the placeholder number. Refresh that and we get Colin returned in the browser. An advantage of using bind param instead of bind value is that we can specify a list of names to search for instead of just one. If we set dollar name to an array containing a list of names instead of a variable containing just a single one, dollar names equals array Andy Brian Godfrey. Change the prepared statement back so that we're only searching for the first name, not the ID as well. 
Remove that unneeded bind param line. Now we've only got the one placeholder, so we need to renumber this bind param line here. And then using for each again and looping through dollar names, the dollar names array, and setting its value each time to dollar name. And then use that dollar name in the bind param statement and close off the for each loop after executing the statement and returning the results. Then it'll loop through each of the variables in the array, refresh that, and something's gone wrong. What's gone wrong? Okay, I've named the array wrong. The array should be called names, and each of its values should be called name in the for each loop. Go back and refresh that, and that's better. Change the names in the array, and the list that we get output changes. So that's a more flexible way of searching than using bind value, where you have to specify the actual string itself. That's fine, that's exactly how MySQLi works, using these question mark placeholders, but you can see that if you have a series of these question marks, it could become confusing when you get to the stage of specifying which ones which by numbering their positions. And it's especially confusing if we have to add one, if we change things, and we have to add one early on in the SQL query, because all the others have to be renumbered. PDO, unlike MySQLi, supports named parameters. And this involves, instead of using the strings of question marks, we name the database field names, which is much easier. So we'll look at named parameters in the next lesson.